Hi, this is Tom Oding from the University of Iowa. This is a DVD on IOL placement and centration. Our goal with placement of an ocular lens is to have it centered and right side up. Here's an SA60 one piece acrylic lens. It's right side up when we pick it up from the package. We also need to be careful to avoid touching the central haptic. Here we're placing it in a cartridge which is filled with dispersive OVD. The leading haptic is folded in and over the optic. The trailing haptic is placed over the optic such that a taco is formed with the two haptics in the taco formed by the optic. The plunger goes along the bottom of the cartridge and pushes the optic and thus the IOL forward. Sometimes the wound needs to be enlarged a bit to get to about three millimeters or so for this system. Here you can see the inocular lens is going forward. The leading haptic is just under the anterior capsule and in the bag. And now a Kuglin hook is used to rotate the lens so that both haptics are in the bag and it's about 90 degrees away from the wound. This allows you to place the irrigation aspiration unit under the inocular lens easily to remove the OVD below and above the inocular lens. The three-piece acrylic lens is loaded in a similar fashion. However, you have to be very careful with three-piece lenses of the haptic, which can be damaged by plungers. So here the inocular lens is placed and the optic is placed in a similar fashion with the center folded down and the two sides of the optic curling over and the haptic, the trailing haptic, is placed on the side of this knob so the plunger will not damage it. There's the flash of the optic, the leading haptic, and the trailing haptic over the knob. As you place the inocular lens, one must be careful that it's placed right side up. You have to pay attention to the way the haptics look. Pay attention here as the haptic comes out, as this leading haptic comes out, and you'll see we have a problem. As the haptic comes out, it's upside down. When it looks like an S, stop. Here's a patient of mine that had a myopic surprise postoperatively. Notice that haptic which is visible. It's upside down. It looks like an S. When the haptics uh, are right side up, they tend to push the optic down. When they're upside down, they push the optic forward, which gives you a myopic surprise. So here the lens was just rotated around by twisting this cartridge to make sure that the inocular lens was right side up. Following placement of the wound, the wound was checked for its size. A three millimeter fits, as you would expect, but a 3.2 millimeter doesn't fit. This reminds me of the O.J. Simpson glove, where no matter how hard we tried, we just couldn't get it to fit. When you use a forcep to load the three-piece acrylic, you have to make the incision bigger, three and a half or four millimeters or so. Here you can see the forcep grabbing the inocular lens. A mustache grab refers to the haptics looking like a mustache. An axial grab is 90 degrees different and is the more common grab. It allows a smaller incision as the haptics don't get in the way as much. So here's an axial grab with the forcep. We're going to pay attention to the haptics as they go in to make sure that the lens is going to be right side up. You can see that that haptic is going in nicely and the lens is right side up. Now we're releasing the forcep and it's sticking a little bit, which is not uncommon with this acrylic lens. So now it's pushed away with a bare care spatula. These lenses are designed for right-handed people. So that's another way to make sure it's right side up. It should be easy for a right-handed person to spin the lens in. And now it's rotated 90 degrees again, which allows us to get under the optic to remove this bit of hemorrhage. Here's a, a time when I did not rotate the inocular lens. 
And you can see that when I left it here in this position, it made it very hard to remove the viscoelastic as the trailing haptic got in the way. Cataract surgery is like billiards. You need to plan ahead for the next step. In this case, I didn't. I should have rotated at 90 degrees. Don't stretch the wound. It's much better to make the wound bigger with a knife than it is to stretch a small wound as I'm doing here. I kept trying and trying and stretching, risking tearing decimates. And finally, I did the right thing, and I gave up on the stretch, and I simply made the incision bigger. This makes the incision far more likely to seal. Here's a decentered interocular lens that was noted postoperatively to be decentered. There's a complicated case, and one of the haptics is in the bag, and one is in the sulcus. There's less room in the bag, and so the lens decenters. Here's a decentered lens uh, that was noted postoperatively in a patient that had had cataract surgery in a trab. The haptic which was in the bag was simply rotated out of the bag so that both haptics were in the sulcus. You're better off with both haptics in the sulcus than with one in and one out. This lens uh, was uh, far better centered when both of the haptics were placed in the sulcus. Here's a case with a posterior capsular tear that's hard to see, but we're placing a three-piece 6.5 millimeter acrylic lens. The haptic is coming out. It's right side up. It's just under the iris and in the ciliary sulcus. The haptic is, is in perfect position. The optic is right side up. We're going to leave the trailing haptic out of the eye so that we have good control of the lens. So now we have one haptic in the sulcus. Now we're going to use forceps to place the other haptic in the sulcus. And so now both haptics are in the sulcus. And because we have a very nicely centered anterior capsulotomy, we're going to prolapse the optic posterior so that it's captured and in the bag. So now we have two haptics in the sulcus and an optic which is in the bag and a nicely centered inocular lens in a complicated case. Watch here. As this um, lens is inserted, there's a problem with the trailing haptic. And it's, it's come off. You can see there that the haptic is still in the plunger, and yet the inocular lens is mostly in the eye. And so now we have a tough situation. We have to remove this lens. We're going to make the incision a little wider to allow a forcep in the eye. We're going to make a paracentesis across from the incision, and we're going to use a bear care to refold the inocular lens into the forcep and then remove it from the eye and then place another lens which is not damaged. Here's a uh, situation which occurs fairly commonly, and that is a radial tear in the anterior capsule. In this situation, I like to place a single piece acrylic lens because I think that applies the least stress on the capsular bag, and it's least likely to go radial. So here is uh, an SA60 uh, lens, which is being placed very gently into the capsular bag. This is Dr. Beaver uh, at our institution doing this beautiful job of being very careful to place the inocular lens uh, just into the bag. In this situation, it's best not to rotate too much and just as gently as possible place the lens in. It's nicely centered despite the tear, and this lens will most likely um, uh, be centered for life.
So we've shown uh, several examples of how to place an ocular lens and several examples of problems placing an ocular lens, and I hope this was useful to you.